Hey guys, uh, we're ready to take you behind the scenes of the Mexico City GP episode of the Williams warm-up. So we started the US GP with our pop-up store in downtown Austin. Uh, we've got all the new merchandise, but also we had some very special visits. One of them from me. track it's a bumpy track it's a flowy track and most drivers come away saying dang that's one of the greatest tracks in North America if not sometimes on the circuit why why is it such a special fun track yeah it definitely is a, a very cool track and yeah I mean for sure for North America I was for, I mean not that I've driven that many car tracks in North America but I was for sure say it's, it's one of the nicer ones on there that guy there it is. I, I saw this. Someone sent this to me, actually. Yeah, you're, you're the guy. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. How does that make you feel? What does that mean to you that people are out here supporting you regardless with a with a lap? That's pretty cool. That's, That's, a, that's a lot of commitment. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, if I understood correctly, it's like you said at some point that if I got points uh, that you were going to do it. He's a man of his word, so you, you, yeah, you, you got to respect it. That's a, that's a man of his word right there. Okay. And it is time for some autographs. He is in all of that glory, Logan Sargent. Hey man, this is one of those things that I gotta ask. When you watch yourself, none of us non-drivers don't really have like videos that are made, montages of us like that. How cool is it to watch that and kind of relive some of those really magical moments? Yeah, obviously it's been a uh, it's been a really good year, and uh, looking back at those moments is obviously special. Uh, but first, yeah, I want to say thank you all for showing up. Um, I hope you're enjoying the uh, the day. Enjoying the weekend. Um, hopefully, it's going to be an awesome Grand Prix, and it's great to see you all. By the way, a woo woo for representing America, right? <laughs> the build up is super important. You can't come in with the approach of just, I'm going flat out first. Yeah. Uh, what I've learned about myself is that, you know, I can't perform at the highest level yeah. with all the others. And when I landed in Austin, I was like, wow, this, <laughs> this is awesome. It's amazing what Williams have been doing recently coming into you know America. We're gonna be getting you one of those bucket hats, we're gonna get you one of those leather coats over there. Like it's... I'm gonna wear it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> racing for allowing this to be a possibility for all of us to be here tonight and enjoying Thanks some for Sam, some merch, some cars, and Alex Albon. Thank you for coming.
Looks so real. Hang on, has he got hairy hands? I think he has. Mate. He's got a bit of hair down here. Yes! We caught up with Jamie Chadwick, who has just clinched her third W Series Championship. Um, here she is to tell you all about it. In a Formula One paddock, it's really the who's who of motorsport and it's the place to be, it's the place to meet people, talk, to be seen. And let's talk motorsport, let's talk open wheel racing, of course, here in a Formula One paddock. I'm with three-time W Series champion, Jamie Chadwick. Jamie, I've got to ask, there's some rumours going around that you might be coming to the Indy Light Series, part of the road to Indy. True, false, where are we at? Um, it's not confirmed, but I've been testing in the car. Um, I really valued the opportunity of testing. I mean, just to have that experience to step up and yeah, drive a more powerful car, experience a team like Andretti has been really valuable and I think just helped us assess the options now going forward. So it's given me a good flavour for, for what it's like over here. Um, I'm excited by that, but yeah, nothing perfect yet. Unfortunately, the, the W Series ended prematurely this year. There were some financial uh, hurdles, so to speak. Lewis Hamilton has come out and spoken uh, about it quite strongly and his support of, of more women in motorsport and the W Series, and it shouldn't have ended the way it does. Doesn't take away by the fact that you won your third championship. Uh, no, I hope it doesn't. I mean, um, yeah, W Series for me, I wouldn't be in this position without it. And I feel a lot better driver after three years of W Series than I did before. So it's been a huge opportunity for me as well as everyone else. And I think it does have a place in the sport. I hope that it can find the means to continue to exist and continue to help young girls um, like myself. And yeah, hopefully that next opportunity up, many more other young racing drivers or female racing drivers can get. You're here with Williams. You're part of the Williams Racing family, Doralton Motorsports. Um, I really love what they're doing in terms of embracing the heritage and the history of Williams as one of the cornerstone teams of Formula One, but they're diversifying and they're moving forward in a very progressive way. Do you feel the same? Definitely. I mean, it's really cool. I mean, I joined the team when Claire was at the helm and that was great for me. She's someone I've looked up to, but now seeing how they've evolved and yeah, moving with, I guess, the times of where Formula One's going is great. And being American owned and the audience that we have over here in America, it's really exciting. It feels like a great fit. Like I said, I've been with the team for so long now. Um, they are like a family and I just want to continue that journey with them. I know that you've been to the Indianapolis 500. Would you like to be part of the American motorsports scene? I'd love to, yeah. I mean, it's a huge spectacle, the 500. Um, but just generally, the sport over here is just booming now. Even here in Texas, uh, part of the F1, it's really cool to see where it's going. And yeah, like I said, the feeling that I've got so far being over in the States, especially with the team and Andretti, it's been really good so far. So. Yeah, I'm excited by whatever opportunity might come, but if it's over here in the States, I'll be excited about that too. So we're getting ready to take on the Mexico City GP, which is an unusual challenge because the circuit is at 2,000 meters above sea level. Uh, and this isn't just an issue for the cars, um, because obviously you have less downforce altitude. Uh, it's an issue for the drivers as well. I remember driving there and it's such thin air, you really, really struggle physically. Uh, it doesn't just go for the drivers either, it goes for every single team member. So check it out and uh, you can find out how they deal with it. Well, FX, thank you so much for joining us. Next up is Mexico and obviously some unique challenges. Just take us through how the car itself is altered by Mexico and the altitude that we face. Well, with the altitude, everyone knows that you know, the air density is going down, so for sure the, the downforce is going down. So it's, I mean, it's a track where you need the maximum downforce, you need the maximum cooling, because again, for cooling, the, the air density is, uh, is not helping, so that's uh, the biggest challenge. And normally it's quite, it's quite a hot race, so uh, it's, uh, it's a big challenge for the, the engine and uh, the people working around the engine and the aero. You mentioned it there, you know, it doesn't just affect the car, but it affects the team as well. Just how much does that affect, not, like you said, not just the car, but also the team and the components surrounding that as well? Well, the, uh, the, the components are the same before, but I mean, for the teams, it's altitude. It's, uh, you know, you can try to, to run in an altitude. It's never easy. So it's, uh, for the mechanics, it's, uh, it's also more demanding and uh, it's, a, it's a tough race. It's always been a, a tough race. and. Uh, in Formula One or in uh, various uh, disciplines, uh, it's it's quite a high, um, yeah, high demanding track, and uh, so uh, for the driver, but for the team. Too. Is there anything the team do specifically to prepare for this sort of race? Well, it's 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 one of the races you always uh, highlight in your in your 
you know, preparation and, and, and development because you have to cover, say, the, the cooling system, uh, the, the, to cover the cooling capacity, has to cover the full championship. And knowing that, uh, yeah, Mexico is always the, the most demanding one for cooling. Yeah, uh, of course. And, you know, there's plenty we can do to simulate back at Grove. Is there anything you can actually do specifically in terms of you know setting up for this race that you simulate at the factory ahead of time? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's. Uh, for, for, uh, in the simulator, you can simulate many, uh, many things. I mean, so the, 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 the downforce, you, you, you will simulate it, but the cooling, it's, it's a bit more complicated and uh, it's a bit more down to the, the PU, I mean, the engine supplier, to, uh, to do the work. And uh, so we rely on, on Mercedes for, for this part of, uh, of the job. Is it something when, you know, going into a new season, you, you consider, for instance, is it something that we'll consider, you know, the altitude when we think about the FW45, I'm sure we're already thinking about that, but is it something you consider when, you know, coming to these sorts of tracks? You, yes, you, you have to consider it, but it's, uh, you know, you, you have 20 other, 23 other races, so you can't just design your car for this specific one. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's part of the, yeah, of the championship, but you, you will not optimize your car around Mexico for sure not because as I say it's really an alpine type of a, a performance. So yeah, we, we make sure we can do the, the full distance race, but it's not the optimum race for, for us. Well thanks. Thanks so much for your time and good luck in Mexico. My pleasure. Cheers. That's it for this episode. The next one is the Brazilian GP, one of my favorites. Uh, but in the meantime, you can download the app and sign up to WilliamsF1.com. Catch you later.